Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and I'm actually in the middle of preparing for and pre-fishing for the uh, the annual Spro Frog tournament here on Gunnersville Lake. And uh, I thought to myself, man, this is a good opportunity to make a video about how to modify all the different little modifications you can do to a hollow body frog. That's a big one, um, and uh, and let it help you catch a little bit more fish. So the Spro Frog Tournament, um, pretty simple. You can only use a Spro Frog. You know, I've got the, the walking shad and any of their hollow, hollow body frogs. So I'm in the middle of getting them ready to fish. I've got a, a bunch of new ones that need to be trimmed up and, and all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna go through each individual thing that you can do to your frog and some of the things that I do sometimes and sometimes I don't do them. So here we go. The first one, and probably the most common one that everybody knows about, is trimming the, the tails or trimming the legs on your frog. And typically, and let me get a regular size one, let me put that big ugly one back. Um, <laughs> typically, what you want to have is you want to have one trimmed up at least to start with to where the, the tips of the, the legs come to the nose when you fold it up over top of itself and Spro got smart. They started just making them that way. So I was surprised. All the ones that I bought a couple of years ago had them about an inch longer and you had to trim them up. So they come right out of the box just like that. The options. Some people say that if you trim one leg shorter than the other that it walks easier. I haven't really noticed that. Um, more or less I've noticed that it's easier to walk a frog with a shorter rod than it is with a longer rod. And that's a lot of times somebody, people's issue is that they can't uh, get that short of an action on the tip of the rod with a seven foot, six inch rod. But, um, so trim the, trim the tail, the, the legs up. A little bit more about trimming the legs. I don't try to trim them anything, any more than that unless my fish are short striking. In other words, they're grabbing in the legs and that's the only thing they're getting. And when I set the hook, I feel them and then I don't feel them. I feel them on those legs and then I don't feel them on those legs. So what I'll do then is I'll just keep trimming. And I've been known to trim them all the way off if I need to. Uh, very rare do you have to, but that's one of the things. So don't be afraid to trim them all the way up, uh, but only when you have to. Hey, you guys who watch all my, watch my videos all the time and haven't hit that subscribe button, subscribe. Hit it right down there. Subscribe, click, thanks. Okay, another thing a lot of people do, including myself, uh, especially when fishing heavy cover, thick matted vegetation, stuff like that, is we put rattles inside of our frog. Um, and there's several different types of rattles. There's worm, rat worm rattles. They're the little glass tubes that have the two little BBs in it that reel back and forth. I don't typically use wor worm rattles because I don't like the fact that the glass things are bouncing around and there's one little piece of lead that's inside of the frog that, uh, that, that, that rattle can break on and it's just, it's useless but they're easy to stick in that little bitty hole. Um, the, another rattle would be a couple of BBs. Where's my terminal box? Just a couple, there's one on the ground. Just standard 177 BBs in there will make a little bit of noise. Um, I'll throw uh, a 16th ounce or, yeah, 16th ounce tungsten weight in there, a couple of them. You gotta be careful doing that because you'll put too, you can have a tendency to sometimes put too much weight in there and it'll start to sink and it's no longer a topwater frog. Um, so you gotta be careful with that. And then uh, the one that I have kept secret for years, and I can't believe I'm telling you guys, is what we call cat rattles or cat bells. Let me get get a larger one and show you. And they're these little bitty star-shaped little bells. Let's see if it'll get a, I can get it to focus on my hand. There we go. Little star-shaped bell. And it's got a, one little BB in it, and it jingles. It's a little jingle bell. Uh, the the five millimeter is the one you want. The ones that are actually a lot smaller, which are these right here, are the ones that you can get into that frog uh, without a problem. Um, I'll put a couple of them in there and then one or two BBs. It makes a really cool noise. Um, I've had fish come from a long ways away to hit them. It never hurts to have a rattle. Um, so I, I tend to put rattles in just about everything. Typically I'll put two, a, a tungsten weight and a couple of BBs or a couple of bells and a couple of BBs. 
just to add a little bit more weight to it. All right, so let's talk about how I how I put a rattle in this in this frog. Um, you only have one access point, and that's the hole that the hook's coming out of. Okay, and so what you do is you take the hook, take the body away from the hooks, rotate the hooks out just like that. Okay. Then what you do is you grab whatever rattle you want and it goes on this side of the hook. I kind of lay it right there, grab my thumb and the hooks and I, oops, try that again. Scrunch the frog down just like that. I fold the frog over, put it right there at the hole and this is where it can stretch that hole open and make it to where it takes on water. You guys get your minds out of the gutter. There you go. It goes down in there. And you just that's that's the only that's the best way that I know of to put it in there. If the if your your bell or your rattle or whatever is too big, then find a smaller one cuz uh, it will uh, tear that hole open and then you're stuck with something that that drains water. Um, let me add another one real quick. Get this one ready so it's done. Find me a BB. Okay. And that one is all rattled up. That's it. That's what it sounds like. It ain't much, but it is something. Um, now let's talk about what happens when it does take on water, because a lot of these frogs do. They'll, they'll take on water. How do you fix it? So there's two different ways of fixing it. And I, uh, I had to clean my boat, boat out last week, so I took all the stuff out that I use. But uh, a Mega Strike fish attractant um, is uh, a, a gel style or a, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, it's a tube of gel. And it tends to stay uh, on your bait a lot longer. And I'll take a big dab of that Mega Strike, and I'll stick it in the hole, and I'll and I'll fill that hole up with water, with with the Mega Strike, not the not the bait itself, but just the hole up, and it'll prevent the water from getting in there for at least 50 casts. So that's that's a great solution. The next solution is my favorite, and it is uh, it's it's more long term. It's one I can do when I when I have time to sit down, but I'll take and I'll wrap my hooks up with, uh, with braided line. I take about 30 pound braid. You don't want heavy braid. It just doesn't t seem to wrap quite, quite well and the knots don't hold quite as good. But you take 30 pound braid and let me find a frog that I know needs to have that done. Now that one's already done. Yeah, we'll do this one. Okay. Same thing, you pull the, uh, the hooks out just like that. Let me pull the camera a little closer so you guys can watch. First thing I do is actually, you know, tie a knot. And I found that if you wrap, if you tie a real quick um, slip knot, one loop, and braid's already slick anyway, so it's not gonna, it's gonna pull out pretty easy. But this is a good start. And just put it over top of one of the hooks, pull it tight. Okay. Then about where that hole is going to be, I start to wrap. And I wrap a lot. I'm trying to build up as much line as I can right there where that hole is. You guys see that? As much line as I can to fill that hole. And what this does is it still allows the air to escape and the, and the frog to collapse when a fish bites, but it makes it more difficult for the water to get into the body of the frog while you're working it. And it's a lot of wraps. And the reason I like 30 pound braid and 20 pound braid, I don't like any small on that because then you're making a thousand wraps, um, is that they, uh, they do wrap tighter and hold tighter. Okay, let me check it. And that's kind of what you want. You want it to be, see how it's dimpled in there? 
because then you're going to do this and you want half of that knot to be out just like that okay that's how you want it yeah the air is still coming out so I'm going to take it I'm going to pull back out I'm going to wrap a few more times up here just to make it you know give it a nice little ramp to collapse on okay and then to finish this is a finishing knot that I used when I uh, when I fly tied flies all the time called the whip finish and you can look it up on YouTube and kind of get an idea what it is but you're going to wrap around one hook okay you're going to take and you're going to just roll your your um, knot over or roll your line over into a loop and then you're going to wrap just one part of that loop multiple times gosh that line I got to hold on to it hold on okay and you're just going to wrap multiple times around hope I'm doing this right I do it right when I'm not on video okay Then you pull this pull this line tight without putting a hook in your pull it real tight. Ouch. And then cut. That's all you do. Cut your tag ends off. And then I'll throw a little super glue on there if I need to. This one's gonna hold for a while, but super glue never hurts. Reset your hooks. And there you go, just like that. Permanent solution. At least until your hooks, your knot comes undone. But uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool way of fixing that problem. Um, just make sure that you can squeeze really good and be able to it, the air come out easily. If, if it comes out too hard, just kind of move that knot back a little bit. You can adjust that knot back and forth before you glue it. And there it is quick little solution. So one more modification that I almost forgot was bending the hooks out to get better hook sets. Uh, a lot of hollow body frogs, I don't care what manufacturer it is, um, you want to bend those hooks out just a hair to where, this is how I do my test. I run my fingers along the side of the body and I don't, per I don't squeeze, I just slide them alongside the body and if that hook doesn't snag my skin on my finger, then I, I bend the hook out just a hair. And I mean just a hair. Take your pair of pliers. These aren't very good for doing it for some reason, so I'm not gonna do it with that, but grab a hold of your hook and you wanna bend it straight up. And it's just, I mean, a hair of a bend to where when you slide along, and I'm gonna squeeze a little bit, slide along that, that uh, hook snags the skin. Let me find one that I've done it with. Uh, this one right here, I think. Yep, you slide it right along, and every time it just snags that skin, and that's what you want. That's all I know about modifying a frog, uh, and uh, I hope it helped you. I hope you guys uh, have a great frog season. Uh, it's just getting kicking off here in, uh, in Tennessee and Alabama and Georgia. I'm excited. Uh, I've already caught two this morning on a frog, uh, two yesterday, uh, so it's just around the corner where it's going to be on fire. Uh, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me hope you teach them how to fish. Subscribe to my channel. Check out Fishing Shirt of the Month Club. Check out Special Ops Survivor, my nonprofit that uh, I'm supporting this year. Uh, they, uh, they help um, wives and children of uh, Special Ops guys who've been killed overseas, help them get back on their feet. And uh, it's an amazing organization. So check them out. But uh, um, anyway, y'all take it easy. Have a great day. We'll see you.